Now I'd like to move on to a section from the main vocabulary word list, which I will be using um, time and time again. So it will be worth it to take some time right now to explain where these words come from. So I titled this the 10 highest frequency words from five different disciplines. And it's from the One Health English Corpus, a collection of 651 biomedical journal articles, which I collected in a random fashion based on recommendations from our school's laboratories. So as I showed in the previous video, we have 25 or 26 labs at our school. And I asked one student from each lab for some journals that they depend on for their research. I also asked our various deans of our school, I think there's six or seven of them, about which journals they think our students should be reading. And I compiled those all together, and I've done a bit of analysis on this collection of journal articles. And one of those forms has taken uh, up in this word list. So let me explain what's going on with these columns. I'm going to start here with Corpus 1 and the frequency, okay? So our first keyword is neurons, and it's at the top of the list because it is the most frequent word correlated to the basic science corpus. Okay, what that means is in the uh, full 651 journal article chunk, there's a section of about a hundred articles related to basic science. And these are things like the Journal of Biological Chemistry, or Cell, or the Journal of Physiology, or American Journal of Physiology. And on average, across those journals, the word neurons appears five times per article. Does that make sense? Um, differentiation, on average, occurs 4.2 times per article in this data set. So that's what that means. That's um, the basic science. And I, what I did was I took the top 10 most frequent words correlated to the basic science corpus. I put here POS. This is N for noun. R for adverb, J for adjective, N for noun, N for noun. You can go to the bottom of this and see in the notes, and I have this information written here as well. So all of the POS is right here, and the corpus is right here too. So um, if you want to get an, a bit more information, going back up, I... Um, I guess I'll talk about this corpus too. This is a little more complicated. I divided my journal articles into two main themes. One is by the theme of science, and so that's what we have on here, the five. We've got basic science, infectious disease, and microbiology, medicine, which means human medicine and pharmacology. I know it's just called medicine, but since we're in a vet med school, I often end up saying human medicine. Multidis oh, and sorry, let me say, infectious disease is represented by journals such as Virology Journal, Journal of General Virology, Archives of Virology, <laughs> anti Antimicrobial Agents and Chemotherapy, I'll send you the list later. Don't worry too much about it yet. Medicine is represented by British Journal of Pharmacology, Lancet, New England Journal of Medicine. <clears throat> Multidisciplinary life sciences. So this is journals like Nature and Science and PNAS. But I didn't select these articles randomly because I didn't want physics and earth sciences in here. So I made sure to take these from life science articles. 
And finally, vet med and ecology. This is things like veterinary comparative oncology, journal of wildlife biology, um, veterinary internal medicine, things like that. Okay, that's the one way that I divided this, but I also divided it another way. So um, there are four major sections to a research paper, introduction, methods, result, and discussion. So I also divided them that way so we could do a different style of analysis. But I'm going to talk about that in a future lesson. So when it says corpus 2, this just means the second most highly correlated corpus with this text. So, so that means neurons is statistically most highly correlated to the basic science journals and secondarily to results. Don't need to worry about that too much at the minute. Category is something that I made myself, so there may be some errors in here. And I am still actually in the process of refining it, but I thought something is better than nothing. Typical use is, again, uh, based on statistics and word counts. So in the first listed one, it says of neurons. So that means that the phrase of neurons is used more often than the phrase in neurons. And uh, next we have the phrase hippocampal neurons. So not always the case, but in general, I organized it in order of frequency. The words that are in parentheses are not statistically significant, but I put them in as a representative sample to help you get a sense of how writers are using these words. Okay, that's what this list means, and uh, that's the organization of it. You'll notice, um, for example, basic science frequencies are relatively low compared to some others. So you'll see infectious disease, um, even in our, what is this, our top seven words in infectious disease, are used more frequently than even the top word in basic science. This indicates that the journals represented by infectious disease are more tightly clustered. Their theme is more highly overlapping, which makes sense based on the journals which I mentioned to you. Basic science is a little bit more of a mixed group. That's one explanation for those frequency differences. Anyway, <clears throat> excuse me, I'd like you to look through this list. I suppose that you know most of these words. Most of these words are pretty common words. Um, although I have to say, I'm not a biologist again, and when I read a word like binding, Okay, in general, I think of maybe skis. When I'm putting my skis on, I bind my boot to the ski. Or when I'm cooking, I mean, like the egg or the potato starch is a binding agent to make my food stick together. How do you guys use it? You guys use it as binding to receptors, binding sites, binding protein, binding domain. Can somebody explain that one to me? I have a specific request for someone as their class assignment to discuss the word binding, the most highly frequent word in multidisciplinary life sciences. What does this mean? Are we talking about like proteins and <laughs> recept? Please help. That's, that's what I mean. Um, I would like you to go through this list and choose three words which you are comfortable with. They can come from any section. If all three of them come from basic science, that's okay. If you take one from infectious, one from multidisciplinary, one from vet med, that's fine too. Completely up to you. I would ask that you think about, is the word easy or difficult? 
If it's a relatively easy word like bone, I think we all know what that word means. I would like you to tell us something interesting about bone. Like, I don't know. I don't know much about bone myself, but you could say bird, the bones of birds are much less dense than those of mammals, which is really necessary for keeping body weight low so that they can fly. I don't know. I want what's interesting to you and you might think is interesting to the other people. I have another request. If you do a hard word like IgG, hmm, I see this word a lot. I'm not sure I understand what it means, especially when I read these sentences like conjugated goat anti-mouse IgG antibody. That sounds crazy. Anti-rabbit IgG HRP conjugate. What are we talking about here? Sometimes I read things like anti-human goat IgG antibody. What is IgG? Can somebody please choose this word and explain it? Similar to what we will do with the um, laboratory assignment, I'm going to ask you to share this with your group. And next week's lesson, I'm going to have you react to what you heard from your classmates. So please consider that you will be making a video or audio recording of three words and explain what the word means or explain how the word is used or tell us something interesting about that word. I've got one more challenge or request for you and I was curious about this. I noticed that mRNA is highly correlated to basic science okay messenger RNA and DNA is highly correlated to multidisciplinary science I wonder why is this just a coincidence it might be because after all look at vet med we have the word if as being highly correlated to vet med I don't think that's important it's just kind of an accident of the data set anyway I'm really looking forward to hearing your responses